Um, okay, let's start. So 101 end times Bible prophecies. I found this list and I wanted to go through it because I don't think we'll get through it all, but I thought it would be great to go through um, so we can have it all in place where you we talked about all the Bible prophecies that are going on, right? Um, a lot of these are happening right now and a lot of these have been happening over time. And it's a really good illustration. If you do the math on probabilities of all of these prophecies happening at the same time and all of these things being correct to the degree that they're correct, like Bible prophecy is 100% correct, right? It's always has been. And now we've got the final Bible prophecies coming true day in and day out. And they're all right on time. And if you're, if you really have a good background in this, you know how right on time this all is, and how meticulous these Bible prophecies are coming to pass. And so the statistics of 100% accuracy is pretty crazy. There's no prophetic book anywhere or anything, um, any fortune teller or whatever that has that kind of accuracy. So. It's important to read these and know them so that we can talk to our friends and family and explain to them and hopefully wake them out of their slumber about what's going on in the world because it's getting hot in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? All right. So Isaiah 42, 9, behold, the former things have come to pass and new things I declare before they spring forth. I tell them, to, I tell you of them. So the Bible tells us about prophecy ahead of time. And the reason that God does that is so that he knows that, not he knows, that we know that he is for real. So we don't have to question what he's doing. We don't have to question who he is. We know because of the accuracy of the prophecies, the accuracy of the text, once you've studied it. Now, a lot of people say that it's all made by man and this and that, but they never actually studied it. They've never looked into it. They say they kind of looked into it, but they don't know. Like when you study the Hebrew of it and you dig into the words of the Hebrew, I used to think the same way. Let's put it this way. I used to be the same way where I was like, oh yeah, it's just a book written by men to control the people. <clears throat> it's just, <clears throat> excuse me. It's just, you know, stories to talk about life, all of that stuff. I used to be that person. Then I started actually looking into stuff. I started actually researching the original language. When you start getting into looking at the original language and digging in to the intricacy, like you guys, when you see the Hebrew and the numbers and how it all comes together, it is like this math number letter. It's so deep, like the depth that is there, like human, human brains are not capable. It's all by design and it's designed so meticulously. And if you look at even this year, how this year has unfolded, um, the way that days have lined up this year, the way that holidays have lined up this year, it is meticulous clockwork and a man is not that talented. Sorry, ain't gonna happen. Okay, so Isaiah 46, nine to 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other, I am God. There is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure. So he's saying that he told us from the beginning and even the prophecies that are within the first line of the Bible, there's like several prophecies in the one line and it's deeper and deeper and deeper. If you if you know the if you go into the Hebrew and you start looking at the numbers and the actual letters, it goes even deeper. Even the first word goes even deeper. That's how meticulous it is, okay? John 13, 19. Now I tell you before it comes that when it comes to pass, you may believe that I am he. So why does he give us Bible prophecy? So that we may know and not question who he is and who Yeshua is, right? <clears throat> he doesn't want us to be confused. If we search it out and if we look and we actually, actually try to um, 
dig deep into it and understand and not just push it aside, he will show you exactly who he is. And that's the purpose of the prophecy. He doesn't want us to be confused. He doesn't want us to be in the dark. He does want us to search him out and try to understand who he is, but he gives us all the things that we need within the text. <coughs> Excuse me. The Bible foretells many signs that would accumulate in the last days. Jesus indicated these signs would arise together as his return drew near, Matthew 24, 33 to 34. Though many of these prophecies won't climax until the actual tribulation period, our generation is the very first to see every trend in place. As the final seconds of this age tick away, these events will come to, into even clearer focus. Keep in mind as you read this list that these prophecies were penned 1900 to 3500 years ago. How does this relate to you? The last several pages will provide the answers and you need to read them carefully. Okay, so we'll get to the, the end hopefully today. If not, I'll do a part two on this. But we have to understand that these prophecies were in, they were written down, they were, they were confirmed through the Dead Sea Scrolls. So a lot of people say, well, they wrote them later. No, we found the Dead Sea Scrolls. So that confirmed a lot of the books and a lot of the authenticity of the letters in the books that we found. And that's why God sent the Dead Sea Scrolls for us to find, because he didn't want us to be doubting in any possible way. So he's like, oh, no, you know what's going to happen at the end? People are going to say, oh, man wrote these books and they just added that stuff in there so that the prophecies would come true. No, what he did is he made some people find the Dead Sea Scrolls in some caves in the middle of nowhere. And then they're like, oh, well, this matches the books that we already have. So we know that scripture is authenticated, right? So let's go through the actual prophecies that are in the scriptures. Number one, false Bible teachers would bring heresies, have many followers, and cause others to reject God's actual word, 2 Peter 2, 1 to 2. It is very common today to find people who reject the body, the Bible at hand because they've heard it misrepresented by a false teacher. So what are these false teachers? You got Mormonism, you got Jehovah's Witness, you got guys like Joel Olstein and those, those um prosperity preachers. They're preaching all of this stuff that is nonsense and not what the actual scripture is. They're not teaching you the prophecies in the scripture, not teaching you the things in the scripture. And therefore you have all of these people who have not even looked at the Bible, not even looked at what it actually says, never read the prophecies in there, never looked into it because of the false teachers. Okay. I have life experience with this. I was my best friend. Her whole family grew up Jehovah's Witness. You cannot talk any Bible stuff around them because their family grew up Jehovah's Witness. They think they know the Bible. But anybody who knows anything about Jehovah's Witness is they don't know the Bible. It's, it's like this different version of the Bible that they are presented through the organization and it's all about the money, okay? Um, as for me, I grew up Catholic. I grew up Catholic. My grandma's Catholic. She was a lovely woman. She loved Jesus very much. But the things that we learned in Catholic Church were not in the Bible. They weren't. I actually went and read the Bible and I was like, where is this stuff that I learned in Catholic church and Catholic school? It wasn't in the Bible. Oh, I it wasn't in there. So read the actual Bible. Okay. The reason the false teachers are there is to, is to confuse you and draw you away. And then if you don't know the prophecies and you don't know the stuff in there, you're not going to believe because you're going to think that it's just stories from men right? You're going to think it's just these tales, just like everything else, but it's not. It's intricate, perfect prophecy. That's only one. You guys, I don't know if we're going to get through 101 tonight if I keep yapping like this. I'm sorry. Okay, number two. The false prophets would be money hungry, smooth talkers. Second Peter 2, 3. A growing number of t TV and, uh, and evangelic, uh, evangelic, I can't say the word, sorry. <laughs> evangelists <laughs> I guess it epitomize this they twist the scriptures use misleading words and merchandise the unwary so those people that are on the TV just making bucks off of it they're not doing it because they care about you figuring out the truth okay they're doing it because they want and that's why they're twisting it that's why they're making it sound good that's why they have this doctrine of anything goes and they're not really teaching you what the scriptures say. Okay. 
Number three, the Christian gospel would be preached as a witness to all nations. Matthew 24, 14, Mark 13, 10, Revelation 14, 6. Today, portions of the Bible have been translated to over 2,400 2, languages and dialects covering over 90% of the world's population. You gotta remember these prophecies again were written 2,000 to 3,000 years ago. Number four, uh, global communications were foreseen. Revelation 11, 9 to 10, and 17 to 17 8 the bible prophesies that an entire world would see certain events unfold remember this is written 2000 years ago they had no idea what wi-fi was back then they had no idea what the internet was back then but they foresaw that the whole world would be able to see certain events unfold the invention of television and the deployment of global global satellite networks during the 20th century allows news to travel the world at the speed of light for the first time ever. Remember that the apostle that in Apostle John's day, who wrote this, news traveled at the speed of horseback maximum. Okay, but he saw that everyone would be able to see these events unfolding. Number five, mankind would be capable of destroying all life. Matthew 24: 21 to 22. Consider that when Jesus made this prophecy, the, armament, the armaments in his day were swords and spears. But today, with nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons, it is possible to wipe off all flesh on earth. When Jesus said those words and when they were written down, that was not a possibility. But yet, it's meticulous. And if you look at the nuclear type imagery that's in scripture, how would they know about nuclear energy at that point, right? Number six, the use of nuclear weapons was anticipated, Zechariah 14, 12. The neutron bomb melts, dissolves its victims, just as God warned about 2,500 years ago. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet, their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, their tongues shall dissolve in their mouth. This was unimaginable in Zechariah's day, yet it's in the scriptures, okay? Seven, there would be a global cry for peace, 1 Thessalonians 5, 3. Never has there ever been such a concerted global effort to try to bring peace at any cost as there is today. Number eight, the Antichrist would use false peace to destroy many, Daniel 8, 23 to 25. With all the problems facing mankind, multitudes are looking for a savior to usher in peace and prosperity without moral accountability. The Antichrist will promise the world and Israel such peace if they follow him, but the underlying of his intentions will be sinister. So this is going to be happening very, very soon. You're going to start seeing um, talks about peace, especially in the Middle East. You see it right now. There's all sorts of stuff going on in the Middle East. We'll get into that later. But what you got to understand is they're going to make it look good, right? You notice that there's six world leaders that have just stepped down right now. This is by design. They're stepping down to make room for the Antichrist to step up, okay? So they're going to come out of all, they're gonna, all this corruption, all this stuff is going to come out. And they're going to they're gonna be like, oh, look at all your governments are corrupt. We need to fix that. And then what do they do to fix it? Oh, we have this guy, the Antichrist guy. We got, we're going to put him into place and he's going to fix all the problems. He's going to bring peace. There's going to be no more wars. And it's going to look really good. He's going to disguise himself as an angel of light, okay? But underneath it all, give it some time, he's going to reveal who he really is because, you know, a zebra can't change its stripes or whatever that saying is. Um, you will notice that he will be lawless, he will twist the scriptures, and you're going to need the Holy Spirit and you're going to need to know the scriptures to be able to spot him. So you got to draw close to Jesus, draw close to Yeshua so that you will be able to spot him. Because there's going to be people deceived. He's going to do wonders. He's going to do all sorts of things. He's going to bring peace. You're going to think, oh, wow, this is amazing. We finally have normal life back. But then, of course, it's not going to be such a good thing. Okay? Uh, next thing. Number nine. In the last days, Israel would have a peace treaty in place that the Antichrist will confirm and eventually break. Daniel 9, 20, 27. Currently, the world's governments are striving for an Israeli peace treaty. We have that going on today. Um, sorry, I just got to... Pardon me. Oh, why this isn't working.
Okay, so I'm just gonna make a couple, um, just so I don't have to start, stop, I'm gonna make a couple moderators so that we can just go through it without arguing with people. So you guys, the people I just made moderators, you can block people if you want. Um, okay, back to it. Uh, number 10, Damascus would be destroyed. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14, Jeremiah 49, 23 and 27, Amos 1, 3 to 5, Zechariah 9, 1 to 8. Damascus, Syria is increasingly in the news, it's extremely anti-Semitic. Many terrorist organizations have their basis in Damascus. God declares that they will become a ruinous heap and they will have, have be violently, because they have violently taken what is not theirs. In 2007, Israel vows to wipe Syria off the map if Syria attacked by chemical weapons. Okay, so this one hasn't been fulfilled yet. If you see Damascus become a heap of ruins, just remember this day, this moment that we just had, okay? Remind your family and friends, wait, that was in the scriptures. Damascus just became a heap of ruins. We really not need to make sure that we are right with God because he's up to something here. Number 11, chaotic weather would be pre prevalent. Luke 21, 25 to 26. Yeshua, Jesus, foresaw the seas and the waves roaring in the last days. He also likened these signs to birth pangs, Matthew 24, 8. The Greek word Odin is often translated to sorrows and as sorrows in Matthew 24, 8. It literally means birth pangs. Furthermore, the Apostle Paul reminded us that the creation itself would be delivered from the curse at the end of the age, Rome, age Romans 8, 21, and that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs, Romans 8, 22. As delivery draws near, birth, birth pangs always increase in both intensity and frequency. Therefore, the creation itself would travail at this time as delivery draws near. Of course, chaotic weather is not new, but there are indications that we are witnessing an increase in strange weather. So, I don't know if you've noticed, but the signs and the prophecies being fulfilled and everything is increasing. It's daily now. So the contractions... The contractions right now are daily. You need to talk to your friends and family. You need to make sure that they're aware of what's going on because they're gonna get lost in whatever the world is saying about these current events and not realize that they're all in the scriptures. These are all Bible prophecies, okay? And you'll see, you'll notice, especially right now, the, the contractions are so close, the birth pangs of all of this stuff happening is so close that we just need to be aware of it so so much we need to make sure that people are aware of it number 12 there will be a move be to towards a gov global government global government so this is in the scriptures written thousands of years ago this was written in daniel's time i think that was about three thousand years ago daniel 2 40 to 44 7 to 23 revelation 13 7 to 8 the former Roman Empire, which encompassed president, president, present day Europe, would revive and eventually dominate the world. The, the European Union has steadily moved forward in its attempt to unite Europe politically and economically. It has succeeded in creating the European Parliament, a court and common currency. The globalization is not unique to Europe, it's happening everywhere. This is when you'll see the Antichrist come in. It's gonna be about global, global government, global currency, all of that, you've heard it all before. That was all in the scriptures 3000 years ago. They're saying that they're gonna do this. Now this goes back to that conjunction I was talking about a few day, uh, a few, like a week ago. So right before the Roman Empire was first birthed, and they started to have that um, first birth of the Roman Empire, there, there was a conjunction, and it was a very rare conjunction of Mars, um, Uranus, and something else. Anyways, there's a video in on my timeline. That same conjunction is coming up again. It will be here on August 1st. So you will have that same conjunction when the Roman Empire was birthed. You'll have that again on August 1st, okay? So that's why this is important to watch because we talked about the Roman Empire and the New World Order. And that's when the, 
when the first Roman, Roman Empire was birthed was at the same point of this conjunction. And then all of a sudden we're at the new conjunction that's happening. So it's interesting. All of these things are lining up. It's very, keep your head, look into, look into God, you guys. Um, these are exciting times. Okay, number 13. Literal Babylon, formerly called Babel, Genesis 10.10, would reemerge in the land of Shinar, known today as Iraq. Zechariah 5.10, Isaiah 13. Saddam Hussein spent 20 years rebuilding the city of Babylon. Today, with Saddam's re regime overthrown, the international community is discussing how to rebuild Iraq. So that's rebuilding of Babylon as well. Okay, number... Uh, 14, the fact that God once flooded the earth, the flood of Noah would be denied. Second Peter 3, 5 to 6, there will be, there is a mass of fossil evidence to prove this fact, yet it is flatly ignored by most of the scientific world because it was a judgment from God on man's wickedness. Now, if you look into the flood, look, if you want to look into the flood and confirm or look into it, it's actually quite interesting. Um, every, almost every single native culture of indigenous culture in the world has a flood myth, a flood story, a flood tale in their, um, in their, I don't know what you call them, like their folk tales, okay? Um, the reason that I actually got back into scripture and started to think about scripture again is my daughter was in grade three or something and she came home from school and we lived in a very native um, area. We lived right, right near a native reserve and she came home from school one day and she had the chief at her school talking and the chief had come to talk to their class and she came home and she said oh they have this story he the chief told us this story about um the boat a big boat getting stuck on the mountain there's a mountain right by where we lived getting stuck on the mountain and then a crow came and then another bird came and then they got off the boat okay and i was like what and i knew it was the noah's ark story and this just happened organically. Like I didn't look this up or anything. She came home from school and the chief of the tribe in our area came and told us that's had come and told her that story at their school. And that's when I started to think about things. I was like, wait a sec, wait a sec. What if this stuff is actually true? It's not just stories, right? And then I started to look into things and then I could start to see and confirm things, right? And then the more that I actually research, the more that things are confirmed, so. Um, and that's been quite a while now that I've been looking into this stuff, right? Number 15, increased interest in vegetari vegetarianism. <laughs> Can't speak today. Vegetarianism anticipated. First Timothy 4, 3 to 4. The New Age mov movement has swept the goal globe in the past 40 years, pop popularizing, popularizing this. So in First Timothy 4, 3 to 4, it talks about how certain foods will be and no longer people will say, don't eat those foods, don't eat those foods. You're seeing that now. They're trying to take away all meat, all beef. They're trying to take away certain foods um, and they're trying to replace it with fake food. Why? Because they, they don't want your brain to work, you guys. They don't want you to have healthy whole foods. They want your brain to be suffering, okay? Um, just look into it. We're not gonna just spend too much time on that. Number 16, many wars would erupt I wrapped Mark 13, 7, 8. According to Project Plowshares, there are dozens of major armed, armed, conflict, armed, armed conflicts in the world today. Number 17, ethnic, ethnic conflicts would be prevalent. Mark 13, 7 to 8, Luke 21, 10. Jesus used the Greek word ethos to describe the last day of battles. Today, as in ever in history, we have an ethnic group rising against ethnic group. So you see that all the time, the different groups rising against each other and they're also trying to pit you against different groups when you don't need to be um, pitted against different groups. Number 18, the earth would be filled with violence. Luke 17, 26, Genesis 6, 11 to 13. In the United States alone, violent crime has increased nearly 500% since 1960. 50 years ago, abortion, the violent murder of an unborn child, was illegal in most countries. Today, abortion is legal in most countries, and 46 million children are um, that each year. I should probably watch so that I don't get kicked off TikTok. I think there's certain words you're not supposed to say. Um, 46 million children a year. Um, number 19, 
Jesus foretold that there would be fearful sights, Luke 21, 11. The Greek word translated fearful is probtron, which can be transliterated terror. According to the U.S. State Department, between 1981 and 2006, there are more than 38,000 international terrorist attacks. Number 20, multitudes would travel to and fro, Daniel 12, 4. Okay, so remember that Daniel wrote this long before cars. Daniel wrote his prophecies, uh, I think it was 3,000 years before, before this time. So how would he know that multitudes would travel to and fro, right? Prior to the Industrial Revolution, few individuals traveled beyond their own communities. Until recently, horse, foot, and boat were the only modes of transportation. Yet today we travel by car, bus, plane, train, subway, etc. Millions and millions are running to and fro, just as Daniel prophesied 2,500 years ago. Okay, so Daniel was 2,500 years ago. That's when he prophesied this stuff. Number 21, knowledge would increase. Daniel 12, 4. Today we are witnessing an explosion of available knowledge. With the advent of the internet, it is estimated that our cumulative knowledge is doubling every five years. This exponential increase is beyond what anyone could have imagined. Imagined. Number 22. Well, just to touch on that. So Daniel said that we would have all of this knowledge and it would increase, increase. Daniel didn't know about the internet. Daniel didn't know about these things. And he also... He didn't know about the way that we would have all of this, you know, coming about. Number 22, deadly diseases, which the Bible calls pestilences, would be common. Matthew 24, 7, Revelation 6, 8. Emerging diseases such as AIDS, Ebola, Hantavirus, Dengue, West Nile, SARS, Bird Flu, etc. I won't say the, the other ones that are hot topics these days. Underscore this fact. Ironically, just a few decades ago, some scientists were forca forecasting that advances in medicine might soon eradicate deadly diseases. So a few decades ago, they were saying we would have less deadly diseases. Now we have one every six months, four months even. We have a new variant. Number 23, the final generation would be open to receiving a mark on their right hand and on their forehead. Revelation 13, 16, consider how the up and coming generation is tattooed, pierced, marked with all kinds of insignia. And today for the first time in history, global tracking and marking technology is available. So Revelation 13 was written by John um, and that would have been 2000 years ago, right? How would he know that it would be globally possible to instill one mark on all these people? Um, number 24, global economic system would exist, Revelation 13, 16 to 17. There was, it was unthinkable in Apostle John's day, yet today globalists on every level of government are seeking to unite the world. Connecting the world monetarily is crucial to their goal. So you'll notice that there's a lot of things going around with the money these days. The money's being inflated. Um, it's not being inflated naturally. It's being done on purpose, right? Because they want to have a different currency. They want to flip the script on what currency is and bring in a new currency. What's interesting is that um, conjunction that I talked about before um, that's happening on the rare conjunction that happens on August 1st also happened 2,300 years ago. When that conjunction happened the first time, that was when money was invented. So money started to get invented around the time of the last time we had a conjunction. And now all of a sudden we have the new conjunction 2,300 years ago. And there's uh, strange stuff going on with currency. So watch currency, stock up, don't take the mark. All right. Um, 25, a man would control all banking and commerce, Revelation 13, 16 to 18. Remember this prophecy was penned 2000 years ago before our computer driven society. Yet until recently, you couldn't have dreamed uh, that one person could control all the commerce. Can we dream that one person can control all commerce now? Yes, look at Amazon. Amazon could easily, Amazon and Walmart could easily combine and control everything, right? they would just control the entire system, right? So 2000 years ago, when this prophecy, John wrote this prophecy down, Revelation 13, 16, 18, he would have had no concept of that being possible, okay? Now we're 2000 years later and that prophecy is being fulfilled day in and day out. We're starting to see it coming together, okay? Number 26, famines would be common. Luke 21, 11, Revelation 6, 5 to 8. According to the United Nations, an estimated 
854 million people went hungry in 2006. Okay, so we have, there's already been famines going on, but now we have even more almost engineered famines happening. We've got droughts going on right now. We've got people talking about wheat shortages coming up. We've got all sort of sorts of talk about food shortages coming up, okay? And that was all prophesied in scripture as well. 26, great signs from heaven prophesied. Luke 21, 11, and 26. Unexplained sightings from the sky appear to be increasing. For example, since 1947, US UFO testimonies have exploded, terrifying many. Each year, thousands of identify unidentified aerial sightings are reported. And in the last few months, you guys, I have seen so many different things from the sky that people are talking about, like strange visions in the sky, strange things in the sky. All of this has been happening definitely in the last, especially in the last few years. Uh, 28, the sun would scorch the inhabitants of the earth, Revelation 16, eight to nine. In recent years, solar activity has intensified markedly. Though this prophecy is clearly a divine judgment on an unrepentant mankind, compromising the earth's atmosphere due to nuclear war and other ecological ecological disaster could facilitate this judgment so if a nuclear war goes crazy that would probably do something to the i mean i'm not a scientist but to the sky or whatever and the more the, the sun could scorch the earth even more um definitely possible something to watch out for uh 29 the nation of israel was born in one day isaiah 66 8 on may 14th 1948 israel became a nation in a day and it was miraculous and it was um, it was in a day there was like i don't know if you just google it just watch the youtube videos but people all came in in a day and they were celebrating and they were dancing and it was quite beautiful actually number 30 jews would begin to regather in israel isaiah 11 11 to 12, Ezekiel 37, 21 to 22, 38, 8, Luke 21, 29 to 31. Over 5 million Jews have returned to Israel in recent times. This is unprecedented, unprecedented in human history. Never has a people group been dispersed for hundreds of years and at every corner of the globe and then regather back to their homeland. Yet God said it and he has done it before our very eyes. Another interesting thing, I have a lot of Jewish friends. I have a lot of Jewish friends and I noticed that they all went to Israel this month. All of my Jewish friends are in Israel right now. Don't ask me why, but they all just happen to be there. Just saying. Uh, 31. Returning Jews would come from the north, east, uh, north, south, east, and west. Isaiah 43, 5-6. Jeremiah 31, 7-10. Amazingly, ne nearly a million Jews have immigrated from Russia in the north. Over 100,000 Ethiopian Jews have emigrated from the south, uh, Zephaniah 310. Since 1948, Jews have emigrated from Europe, Asia, and the Americas everywhere. Number 32, during the diaspora, the dispersion of the Jews to the four corners of the globe, Israel would become a wasteland, Deuteronomy 29, 23 to 28, Ezekiel 36, 8 to 11, Ezekiel 36, 33 to 36. During the past 1900 years, Israel became a nearly uninhabited wasteland. And you know what's interesting? Okay, so Israel became an uninhabited wasteland. And then now you go back and you look at what it's become now. There's like very rich things going on in Israel. The, the lands are prospering, okay? 33. Or wait, I just did that one. Yeah, here we go. 33. Israel, once a desolate desert, would blossom in the last days and produce and export produce to the world. Okay, so I've seen uh, videos of um, avocados coming from Israel and they would they were exporting them to the UK and the avocados coming out of Israel now were like this big. They were huge, giant avocados, okay? So Israel is blossoming and growing. Um, Israel's increased rainfall and world-renowned irrigation technology have caused the land to blossom. Incredibly, as foretold, they currently export over $800 million worth of fresh produce every year, including over $200 million in flowers and ornamental plants. Number 34, Israel would prosper economically. Ezekiel 38, 12 to 13. Amazingly, this recently... Amazingly, this recently regathered, often attacked, tiny nation exported $42 billion worth of good in, goods in 2006. This is inconceivable a century ago. In the contrast, their neighbor Jordan has exported less than $5 billion in 2006. Okay, think about this. 
they're constantly attacked. Everyone hates them. Um, <laughs> they have all these things coming against them, yet they're continually blessed, okay? That is Bible prophecy. They're continually blessed. Why is it that countries right next to them can't seem to figure out how to get blessed like that, right? It's the power of God. You can't, um, you can't argue it. Number 35, Israel would once again plant vineyards. Joel 3, 18, Amos 9, 13 to 15. Today, sweet wine flows from the Golan Heights and many other vineyards in the mountains of Israel. 36, in the last days, Jews would plant forests of trees. The Bible even specifies that the variety of trees, cedar, acacia, myrtle, oil, cypress, pine, and box. Isaiah 41, 18 to 20. Since 1900, more than 1 billion trees have been planted in Israel. This happened in our day after Israel lay barren for nearly two millennia. Number 37, a pure language would be restored, Zephaniah 3.9. At the end of the 19th century, the Zionist movement brought about a revival of Hebrew as a spoken language. In 1948, Hebrew became the official tongue of the state of Israel. Originally, there was only one language, Genesis 11.1, 1, and this pure speech will be restored fully, Isaiah 19.18. Interestingly, Hebrew has no swear words. So you'll see, even in the Christian community, Hebrew is being restored. People are trying to learn Hebrew. They're trying to learn the depths of Hebrew. And eventually, the full language will be restored. And it was, a, I think, as far as I know, I think it was a completely non-used language. And all of a sudden, it was revived and is a used language now, which is quite amazing. 38. Jerusalem would be rebuilt on its own on its ruins, Jeremiah 30:18. Zechariah 12, 6. Since 1948, Jerusalem has been rebuilt on old city ruins exactly as foretold. 39. Jerusalem would be trampled by Gentiles and the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Luke 21 to 24. Since 70 AD, Jerusalem has been trampled by Gentiles until re Jews regained control of the city during the 1967 Six Day War. Just need to take a breath here. Okay, 40. Anti-Semitism worldwide anticipated. Deuteronomy 28, 37, Jeremiah 29, 18, 44, 8, Luke 21, 20 to 24, Revelation 12. History confirms that the Jews have been persecuted as no other people group. Hitler tried to exterminate them, and the Antichrist will do the same during the tribulation. Today, anti-Semitism is a global epidemic. For example, over, there are over 700 general assemblies resolutions passed since the establishment of the United Nations in 1945. Nearly 450 condemn Israel. None have been passed against any Arab country or any Arab terrorist organization. In other words, out of the 190 nations in the UN, over 60% of all General Assembly resolutions rebuke just one member, a tiny little country, Israel. 41. All surrounding nations would be united against Israel, Psalm 83, 48, Zechariah 12 to 4, 12, 12 to 2, 12 to. This has never happened in history, yet today Israel is surrounded by Muslim nations sworn to their destruction. Muhammad said, The last hour, last day, will not be established until you fight with the Jews, and the stone behind which a Jew will be hiding will say, O oh Muslim, there is a Jew hiding behind me, so kill him. And that's from Sahir Ali Bukta, volume 4b5, Hadath number 177 from the Quran. Uh, 42. Jerusalem would be a cup of trembling to all people all surrounding peoples zechariah 12 2 jerusalem is a small city with no natural resources no port significant no insignificant no significant manufacturing and no industrial cap cap capability yet its very existence causes the surrounding nations to shudder think about that why why do they care about jerusalem why think about it why there's no resources there there's nothing there why do they care? It's spiritual. That's why. It doesn't... Wake up, people. Okay. Um, 43. Jerusalem will be a, burden, a burdensome stone to all nations. Zechariah 12.3. Almost daily, the world news reports conflict over Jerusalem. The United Nations, the Vatican, and many world leaders want to make it an international city. However, God says the city is his, and he has given it to the Jews forever. 
Genesis 15, 18, Leviticus 25, 23, Second Chronicles 6, 6. All who burden themselves with it will be cut to pieces. Despite God's warning, US, UN Resolution 476 flagrant, flagrant, flagrantly reiterates that Israel's claim to Jerusalem is null and void. As a result, most countries confuse to transfer refuse to transfer their embassies to Jerusalem, Israel's capital. Number 44. Israel would be invincible. Zechariah 12, 6-9. Since 1948, tiny Israel has been attacked in three major world wars and lesser, several lesser wars. Yet despite being vastly outnumbered, they have, been, they have defeated all attacking foes. Even during the final battle, when it looks like Israel will be destroyed, the Lord shall deliver her. Jeremiah 30, 3-7. Zechariah 14, Mark 13, 14 to 20, an invincible Israel makes no sense unless you believe God's word. An invincible Israel makes no sense unless you believe God's word. Yes, everybody, I will post these. Um, I'll tell you at the end how to get them. Israel would be partitioned by all nations, Joel 32, Daniel 11, 39. This is another unimaginable prophecy in 1947, UN, UN Resolution 181, planned the partitioning of Israel. Currently, the West Bank and Gaza have been separated into Jewish and Palestine settlements, dividing Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. It is also being negotiated today in order to create a Palestinian state. Okay, I want to hit pause here. So right now, Biden yesterday was in Israel talking about dividing Israel again. The last time the United States talked about dividing Israel, we had Hurricane Katrina. As soon as they decided that they were going to divide and, and mess with Israel's um, land, Hurricane Katrina started to manifest that very day. Okay, It is a very bad thing for Biden to be getting involved or trying to divide any honks off of Israel for any reason. The United States will likely see some sort of judgment for that action. 46. The Eastern Gate would remain closed until the Messiah returns. At the Christ's second coming, he will enter Jerusalem through the now sealed East Eastern Gate. Ezekiel 44, 1-3. Today, as prophesied, the Eastern Gate remains sealed. Sealed. So what else is interesting about the Eastern Gate? You can look this up on YouTube. Some plants started growing out of the wall um, beside the Eastern Gate in Jerusalem. And they're starting to spell the words yod heh vav -Hey. Yehovah, the name of God, is starting to grow in plant form outside the eastern gate. There's only one letter left to grow, and they've been growing. And you can see it on the internet. Just Google it on YouTube. I'll try to post it tomorrow, maybe. Um, 47, the nation of Israel, which has been divided into two kingdoms since the time of Solomon, 950 BC, Israel in the north and Judah in the south would be united as one nation in the last days, Ezekiel 37, 15 to, 20, to 22. And so it is, Israel is one nation. So you will see the northern tribes returning to Israel and Israel will be joined as one nation. 48, the returning Jews will have no king until Jesus Yeshua returns. Hosea 3, 4 to 5, as foretold, Israel has been without a king for over 200 250, 2,500 years. Amazingly, it is not only Israel that is no longer a theocracy, but today Jewish, the Jewish state is governed by a democracy compromised, comprised of multiple political parties. And right now there's a whole bunch of stuff going on with the Israeli elections and there's not an actual election happening again until the fall. So they've had quite a bit of turmoil in their political parties. They haven't had a strong leader this entire time since even the last three years, it's been absolute turmoil in Israel politically. Um, 48, the returning Jew, oh wait, 49, rebuilt temple in Jerusalem, Jerusalem ugh, rebuilt temple in Israel anticipated. Daniel 9, 27, 12 to 11, Mark 13, 14, Second Thessalonians 2, 4, Revelation 11, 1 to 2, the prophet Daniel, Yeshua, Jesus, Paul, and John all refer to the temple in the last days. Therefore, we know it must be rebuilt. Preparations for the temple institute are nearly complete. I have heard that they have everything ready to go. So as soon as they're able, that temple can go up really fast. And uh, it won't even take them long. They have everything prepared is from what I've heard. Number 50, the temple sacrifices would be instituted, reinstituted in Israel in the last days. Daniel 
9 to 27, 12 to 11. Remember that Daniel wrote this. Daniel wrote these uh, 2,500 2, years before. So the second temple hadn't been destroyed yet. How would he know that they would be reinstituted, right? Daniel foresaw the Antichrist ending the daily sacrifices. Therefore, the Jewish sacrificial system must have first been restored in the last days. Currently, the Temple Institute has created the temple furniture, vessels, and priestly garments. There are also several hundred young Jewish men who are training for the Levitical priesthood. They practice and they're trained and they are ready to reinstate temple sacrifices at any, at any time. 51. A red heifer without blemish must be born and sacrificed to purify the temple in Israel. In Numbers 19, 2-9. I've heard stories that there is red heifers that have been... Um, being bred for this purpose i don't know if they have a specific red heifer yet but i actually heard that outside of it like that in texas they had been breeding these red heifers um, and the temple institute has posted on their own instagram page that they are getting very close to having a red heifer and that they've been working with international agencies to get the red heifer so a red heifer is a heifer which is a female cow that has never birthed a calf um, that has absolutely no white hairs purely red and as soon as one red hair one white hair shows up or one blemish shows up on that calf it you know it gets a scratch it gets any sort of blemish it is no longer allowed to be the red heifer sacrifice to re regain um temple sacrifices so they cannot reinstate temple sacrifices until there is that perfect red heifer sacrifice because you need that red heifer sacrifice to cleanse the priests and cleanse the people that are going to be doing the sacrifices and the high priest i think has to be cleansed with it as well and no one can enter the temple who has touched a dead body or has been in the room with a dead body um until they've uh, they've they've had the ashes of a red heifer so it, it goes through all this whole this whole thing so if you see like red heifer stuff um, you can follow the Temple Institute on their Instagram. They post a lot. They don't post everything that they're doing, but they post a lot of the information. So you can get kind of a, a view of what they're doing um, and where they are at in the, in the process of rebuilding the temple. Um, 52. Though Israel might be of the focus of many fulfilled prophecies, most Jews will remain blind to the fact that Yeshua is their Messiah until the very end. Luke 19, 41 to 42, Luke 13, 34 to 35, Romans 11, 25 to, 25 to 26. 53. Ancient Petra, Sela, the rock city in Jordan, would exist and become a refuge for fleeing Drew Jews during the tribulation. Isaiah 16, 1 to 4, Matthew 24, 16, Revelation 12, 6, and 14. In 1994, Jordan and Israel signed a peace treaty making Petra a potential refuge for fleeing Jews. Okay, so Isaiah, Matthew, Revelation all talk about Petra becoming a city. For fleeing, for fleeing Jews, and then later on, 3,000 years, 2,500 2, years later, Petra is made, by signing a peace treaty, is made a poten potential refuge, okay? So I, I want to just express the depths of the intricacy of the prophecies being fulfilled. 54, Russia, Magog, would rise as a military power and lead an attack on Israel. Ezekiel 38. Today, most of the southern states of the former Soviet Union are both military powerhouses and, and Muslim. Okay, so obviously we know that Russia is on the move right now. Russia is doing things right now. Um, and Russia was prophesied to be a military power in the last days. Now, Russia last week just started um, joining forces with Syria and Turkey. So that will make them a powerhouse, a military powerhouse. Okay, so Russia is prophesied to lead an attack on Israel. Okay, so keep your eyes on that. You'll start to see that one likely unfold very soon here. Uh, 55, Israel will dwell without walls prior to the invasion from the north. Um, Ezekiel 38, 8 to, 8 to 11. As foretold, Israel now dwells without walls or bars or gates. Until 1900, most Middle East cities and villages were fortified. Yet modern weapon, weaponry, jets and missiles can ascend the covering of the land like a cloud, making these barriers obsolete. So that prophecy is already in effect. Number 56, Iran, Persia, Sudan, Kush, and Libya put would also partake in this attack 
on Israel, Ezekiel 38. Anti-Semitism in the Islamic world is rampant, rampant. According to the Quran and Hadath, Muslims are commanded to fight and slay non-believers in jihad, holy war, unless they convert to Islam. Surahs 9, 5 and 47, 4, volume 1, B2, Hadath, number 24 and 35 in the Quran. Uh, 57, Turkey, Gomer. So I'm saying the country that it is currently and the country that it was in the Bible prophecy, okay? So country Gomer would also, or sorry, Turkey Gomer would also join the attack on Israel. This prophecy was just fulfilled this week. Well, sort of. Russia joined with Turkey and Iran and they're making an alliance right now, okay? So Turkey Gomer will also join on the attack on Israel, Ezekiel 38. So Russia will become a military power and, and then it's going to join forces and attack Israel. This is coming true. These Bible prophecies are coming true right now, okay? That's what people don't understand. You guys, some, a lot of people are like, these Christians are crazy. What are, what are they going on about? It's coming true day by day. Like we're watching it unfold day by day. Pay attention. I'll put this on YouTube after and you can watch it again and I'll, I'll post all of these so that you can read and you can go through and you can look. You can, you can do your research on it. Turkey was elected a, a pro-Islamic party to govern the country in 2005. Hitler's anti-Semitic manifesto, Mein Kampf, became a bestseller in Turkey. In 2007, Turkey elected an Islamic president. 58. Ironically, Egypt and Jordan would not participate in this attack, Ezekiel 38. Interestingly, these two nations have recently signed peace treaties with, with Israel. Israel, Egypt in 1979 and Jordan in 1994. So it was prophesied that those two places, Egypt and Jordan, would not participate in the attack on Israel. 59. Birds of prey would eat the dead flesh of the enemy's armies that fall in the battle against Israel. Ezekiel 39, 4, 17, Revelation 19, 17 to 21. It is at least a little, it is a little known fact that Israel is the bird migration capital of the world, believe it or not. During the spring and fall migrations, billions of birds fly over Israel, many of them migratory birds that are raptors, carrion, dead flesh, eating birds of prey. In fact, 34 species, species of raptors migrate over Israel. So what are the chances that Israel is the bird migration capital of the world? I don't know. 60. The Euphrates rivers would be dried up. This is happening right now. The Euphrates River is dried up right now. Revelation 16, 12. Today, the, mass, the massive attack on Atar Atarak Dam in Turkey, completed in 1990, can hold back the Euphrates to a trickle. So right now, if you just Google Euphrates River dried up, you can see that the Euphrates River is actually dried up right now. 61. Asia, the kings of the east, would be... Um, capable of dis deploying a 200 million man army during Earth's final days. Revelation 9, 14 to 16, 16 to 12. Bear in mind when Jordan penned this, when John penned this prophecy 2,000 years ago, there was only an estimated 170 to 400 million people on the entire planet. Yet today, according to the CIA, China alone has 200, 280 million, 281 million men fit for military service. Can you turn that down? I can't concentrate. Um, 62. Population explosion foreseen. Revelation 7, 9, 9 to 14. The Apostle John, who wrote the book of Revelation, was told the number of number of an army in the last days, 200 million. Revelation 9, 16. This was an approximate population of the world at that time. That John also beholds a great multitude which no one can number coming out of the great tribulation tribulation at the end of the age revelation 7 9 14 indicates an enormous number of people on the planet earth in the last days so john had no idea how we would get this many people on earth but he prophesied it uh, 63. The nations would bud. Luke 21, 29 to 32. In scripture, the tree is often used figuratively as a nation. Ezekiel 31, 3 to 6. Daniel 4, 20 to 22. Since 1945, more than 80 former colonies have regained their independence. 
Our generation has witnessed the end of the colonial era, era and the budding of nations. Okay, I think we're like, I'm getting tired, you guys. I think we're like 40 more to go. Okay, number 64. Egypt would exist in the last days, but only as a lowly kingdom. Ezekiel 29, 14 to 16. Egypt was known as one of the world's greatest ancient civilizations. Yet today, as prophesied, Egypt remains as only a third world nation, which will never again exalt itself above the nations. Verse 15. And while God's word foretold the demise of many other ancient people, groups and kingdoms, which have long since vanished, Egypt remains. So the scriptures told us that Egypt would never be a great kingdom again. It would be a lowly kingdom and it would still exist. There's been a lot of kingdoms that have come and gone and come and gone, but Egypt still exists, but it's a lowly kingdom. It's a third world country. It doesn't have any, it's not a great superpower in any way. And that was all prophesied in the scripture. 65, great earthquakes in diverse places foreseen. Luke 21, 11, Isaiah 24, 19 to 20. Revelation 6, 12 to 14, 16, 18 to 20. Seismic activity appears to be on the rise. Um, 66, marriage would be forbidden by many. 1 Timothy 4, 3. The Bible states that marriage is honorable among all, Hebrews 13, 4. Despite this, the Catholic Church forbids their 400,000 priests, 800,000 nuns, and numerous bishops, cardinals, and monks from marrying. The Orthodox Church, as well as Hindus, Buddhists, and other religious groups, also impose mandatory celib celibacy for certain orders. There's also a huge attack on marriage in culture and on you know, show, TV shows, movies. They attack marriage. They're especially attacking the young children, um, the younger people, to view marriage as something that's not desirable. Um, I see it all the time on kids' shows. They talk about how marriage is a bad thing. So they're indoctrinating the kids to think that marriage is a bad thing. Why is marriage a good thing? Well, first of all, because God made it. And second of all, it makes you stronger. It makes your family unit stronger. It makes life easier. The more people you have in your home working together, the easier your life is. That's just how it is. So why would you want to be separated? Why would, why would the enemy want you separated and weakened? Well, because you're easier to control that way, right? Okay. 67. Deceptive signs and wonders would abound. Matthew 7, 22 to 23, 24, 24. Second Thessalonians 2 to 9. The signs and wonders movement has swept the globe in recent years, replacing the word of God. Experience that feed the senses in the name of Christ are drawing away millions. So you see this in those uh, big churches. Um, you see this in the big churches. That It's all about the emotionalism. It's all about the feelings. It's all about the the spirit coming and doing crazy things. It has nothing to do with what the word of God says, okay? And that's, those are deceptive signs and wonders, okay? Men would be lovers of themselves, Second, Second Timothy 3, 1 to 2. The gener this generation, like no other, regards self above all else. Self-love, self-esteem, self-reliance, self-gratification are encouraged by the media, schools, psychologists, etc. In contrast, Jesus taught self-denial. Take up your cross and follow him. Even many churches today preach a feel good about yourself message. It is a very self, self um, indulgent, self reflective culture now. Even the worship music in the churches is all about you and is not about God anymore. Okay. Uh, 69. Youth would become increasingly rebellious. 2 Timothy 3 2 to 3, Mark 13 and 12. No comment necessary. Are the youth becoming increasingly uh, rebellious? You tell me. 70. Humanity would become increasingly materialistic and lovers of pleasure. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. No generation in history has so many means to entertain and arouse the senses. Every imaginal hedonistic pleasure is available and it has become big business. I don't need to explain that, that that's going on to you all. Um, you guys all know what's going on on the internet and in the world these days. Okay, 30 more to go, 31 more to go. 71, Jesus said Christians would be hated for his namesake. Luke 21, 17, Revelation 6, 9 to 11, 20 to 4. The banning of the Bible, prayer, and Ten Commandments, nativity scenes um, reflect this trend. I'll also consider that, that more Christians were martyred during the past century than all other previous in history. Um, maybe not where we are, but 
around the world, more Christians are martyred than any time in previous history. 72, homosexuality would be flaunted at the end of age. Yeshua warned that in the last days, like in the days of Lot, who lived in the wicked, wicked Sodom, Luke 17, 28 to 30, we know that the root of Sodom's sin was pride and complacency. Pride and complacency. Ezekiel 16, 49, as it is today. However, Sodom's lasting infamy stemmed from their aggressive homosexual sin, Genesis 19, Jude 1 to 7, Today, homosexual agenda is flaunted and forced upon our entire our entire society. Just turn on the TV, go anywhere on the internet, and you will see that it's just like it, you're just indoctrinated with it constantly. Even my bank is indoctrinating people with it. It's like it's like it's like a bank. Just leave it out of it. Doesn't matter. Uh, Seventy three. Substantial wealth and luxuries foreseen. James 5, 1 to 3, Revelation 3, 17, Revelation 18. It is interesting that 40 years ago, some authorities predicted that the growing mass of humanity was so quickly depleting the world's resources and that many resources would be exhausted in a few decades. Yet today, the vast material wealth and luxuries are in abundant supply, just as the Bible anticipated 2,000 years ago. This is interesting because recently more of this prophecy has just become through true what did they discover i think it was in uganda they discovered all this gold in uganda um and so it dropped the price of gold and the 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 price of um metals because they found this huge amount of more gold so it's even more coming true 74 in the last days fallen angels would interact with mankind first timothy 4 1 Luke 17, 26, Genesis 6, 1 to 4. There's been an explosion of ET alien reports during the past six years. Studies indicate these entities have been more like demons than space travelers. They transcend the laws of physics, invoke fear, and deliver anti-Christian messages. There are numerous testimonies that I have seen where people have met an alien and they rebuked it in Jesus' name and the alien left. And so, or they'd have constant alien visitations and then they started to, to speak the name of Jesus or Yeshua at it and the alien would go. So what does that tell you? They're not aliens, they're demons. Uh, 75, apostasy would occur just before the Antichrist is revealed. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. Increasingly, experience-based Christianity is, being re is replacing the Bible as the standard for saving faith. The inc incremental movement is striving for unity at the expense of truth. Christ's exclusive claims are negated in the name of tolerance. And we're seeing this so much in the church. So instead of preaching what the word actually says, people want unity and people want, um, they want that emotional experience, that feeling, and it's all just emotionalism and it has nothing to do with what the scripture actually says. Jesus says, be holy, be righteous, walk in righteousness. He doesn't say, do whatever you want. He says, Pick up your cross and follow me. He doesn't say, do whatever. That's not the gospel. That's not what the Bible says. Open your Bible and read it, folks. That's all I have to say. Uh, 76. There would be a move towards a one-world religion, Revelation 13, 8, 12, Revelation 17. Today, as never before, we are witnessing religions joining hands in the name of peace and tolerance. 77. Some would say that Christ is in the secret chambers or the inner rooms of the last days. Matthew 24, 26. According to the Catholic Church, the Christ is in the inner rooms of hundreds of thousands of Catholic Church, either in Eucharistic tabernacles or mon mon monstrosi monstrosies? I don't know what that is. Um, so Yeshua is up, up in heaven at the right hand of the Father. He is not in Catholic churches in Eucharists, okay? Just FYI, because the Bible says he's up in heaven at the right hand of the Father. And I, now I think he's coming towards earth personally, but we won't get into that tonight. Um, 78, Jesus also warned that this deception would be accomplished by great signs and wonders. Matthew 24, 23 to 27. Currently, Eucharistic miracles are being reported around the globe. Um, just because there's miracles happening, demons do miracles all the time. Pharaoh, if you remember the story of Exodus, Pharaoh had his magicians and his magicians were doing similar things to what um, Moses was doing, but they were just, they were just, it's just tricks and trickery. It wasn't actual 
a move of God. So, what is it? The Gr Greeks seeks after a sign, or Greeks uh, he, Jews seek after a sign, or something like that. I don't remember the verse. Anyways, um, seventy nine. A woman called herself queen and head of the global counterfeit church in the last days, proving herself an imposter. Revelation seventeen eighteen to seven. Tens of millions of follow tens of millions followed the apparition of Mary, who was regarded the mother of the church, lady of all na nations, co redemptress, and the queen of heaven and earth. Okay, so that was prophesied in Revelation 17 and 18. And I highly recommend everyone go read 17 and 18 because the Vatican and all of that will have a part to play in the last days, they will have a part to play in the revealing of the Antichrist. And so, if you're not aware of who the queen of heaven is and who has made herself queen and who Jezebel is and all of that stuff that's talked about in Revelation 17 and 18, you could be deceived. Um, number 80, the woman will also represent the great city set on seven hills, Revelation 17, 9 and 18. The queen of heaven is considered the mother of the Roman Catholic Church, which has its headquarters, the Vatican, situa situated on seven hills. The Catholic Encyclopedia states that it is within the city of Rome, calling the city the city of city of seven hills that the entire area of the vatican state proper is now confined i heard okay so i haven't been able to really get a lot of information of this but i heard that rome actually was and rome was having fires last week which is interesting uh, 81. In the last days, this wicked woman would go out over the face of the whole earth. She would be associated with a global curse. Her final destination would be Babylon in the land of Shinar, Zechariah 5. Interestingly, the app apparition of Mary claims that she will soon travel through the entire world, saving those who look for her. So this has all been prophesied in scripture, and it's not something that you want to be looking for. You do not want to be worshiping the queen of heaven. 82, epidemic drug use foreseen, Revelation 9, 21. The Greek word translated sorceries is pharmakia, which can also refer to drug use, both illegal drugs and mind-altering drugs. The use of illegal drugs and the dispensing of mind-altering drugs has risen sharply during our current generation. Um, so the other thing you want to look at, look at pharmakia and where it's talked about in Revelation. You have to understand they didn't have pharmacies. They didn't have... The type of pharmacia that we have nowadays they didn't have jabs if you know what i'm saying and there is a very clear reference to pharmacia in the last days and how a sin was committed against the people with pharmacia okay so read between the lines of what i'm saying a great sin was committed and it hurt all the people um, that took the pharmacia okay and that is prophesied in the scripture Number 83, sorceries, sorceries referring to witchcraft, magic, and occult practices used to enchant and deceive also are also anticipated in the last days. Revelation 9, 21, 18, 23, 21, 8, Isaiah 47, 9 to 15, Micah 5, 10 to 15. Today, interest in the occult is flourishing. You see it everywhere. Go to the bookstore. Go to chapters. Look at, look at the books. Look at what kind of books are out there now. You didn't have those 10 years ago. Um, and they're going after the kids. They're going after the young people to get them into witchcraft, get them into crystals, get them into all that occult stuff, get them totally demonized so that they can't see the truth until they meet Jesus, okay? So talk to your kids about this stuff. Talk to your kids about witchcraft. Talk to your kids about the occult stuff because it's being force-fed to them right now, okay? They're not given, they're not, in their culture, the kid culture these days, they're not given any other options other than occult stuff. It's just, there's so much of it there. In every single young person's show, all of that, it's all there. Just just look into it, you'll see it. You'll see it right away. Once you see it, you can't not see it everywhere. 84, preparations for a global war, a global war anticipated Joel 3, 9, 14, Matthew 24, 22, Revelation 16, 14. Never in history had so many nations stockpiled weapons for mass destruction. 85, Environmental devastation on the planet foreseen, Revelation 11, 18. Our generation has done more, more to ravage the environment than any previous generation. 86, there would be signs in the sun, Luke 21, 25. In the recent years, there's been a massive increase in solar activity recorded. Still future paranormal events uh, might, must yet occur. Revelation 13, 13 to 14, 16 to 14. 87.
87. Many would call themselves the Christ, Matthew 24, 5. Jesus Yeshua was a, a preacher who never traveled outside the tiny nation of Israel. And he had the audacity to say that many would come in his name claiming to be the Christ. Yet today, multitudes within the New Age movement, Eastern religions, and cults call themselves the Christ. This is another incredible prophecy. So Jesus Yeshua never left his little area, yet he said, many are going to come and call themselves the Christ. How did he know that people would do that, right? Well, because he's the Messiah. 88. God said that his name would be great among the nations, Malachi 1, 11, Philippians 2, 9 to 11. Jesus in Hebrew, Yehoshua, means Jehovah saves. It means God saves, okay? So Jesus in Hebrew means Yehoshua, which is actually Yehoshua. Jesus is an alliteration from the Greek name. Um, and it means that God, Yehovah, greater in heaven, saves, okay? That's what his name actually means in the Hebrew. As we begin the third millennium, over 2 billion, billion people profess to be Christians or believers in Yeshua Messiah. A multitude more regard Yeshua Jesus as the greatest prophet and teacher ever. As foretold, no other name compares to the fame ascribed to Yeshua Jesus Christ. Okay, and this is just a, a note for anyone who's listening that doesn't believe in Yeshua yet, doesn't believe in Jesus yet. Why is it that the schools have no problem talking about every other religion? But as soon as you talk about Jesus, as soon as you talk about Christianity, as soon as you talk about believing in the actual Bible and the Messiah, Jesus, they are triggered by it. Why is that? Why is it the only one you can talk about all the other religions and nobody bats an eye? But if you mention Jesus in schools or anything like that, people get up in arms. Why is that? Okay, just think about it. Um, 89. Jesus prophesied that even after heaven and earth pass away, his words would never be forgotten. Luke 21, 33. As we near the end of the age, we see that Christ's words remain accurate, renowned, and revelant, re revel relevant as they were 2,000 years ago. Today, Bible societies alone distribute approximately 500 million scripture portions or entire Bibles every, every single year. The Bible is the most popular book in the world. Why? Why? If nobody wanted to read it, why are they reading it? Number 90. Despite the Bible's numerous warnings, the last day, prophe last day prophecies, many people will be taken off guard when these events accumulate. Luke 21, 34 to 36. 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 to 6. Take heed to yourselves so that you're paying attention. That's why I'm making this video today. I want you to, to know what these prophecies are and how many of them and how accurate they are because I want you to be able to stand on the fact that the Bible is true and that these prophecies are completely accurate and they are being unfolding between your, be, before your very eyes. Some of them are unfolding this week on the daily, okay? So I want you to be aware of them so that you can tell your family and friends and make sure that they are prepared as well. 91, all true followers of Christ would suddenly vanish or be raptured, caught up by the God, Jehovah of heaven. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 to 17, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 52, a false explanation will deceive the unsuspecting masses, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 to 12. To, today, many apparitions, angels, ETs, ETs, uh, Chandlers, and New Age agers are offering a counterfeit explanation that this event will soon take place. You can see already the predictive programming going into place about the the aliens and all of that stuff. You can see it start to happen now. There's many different people have many different viewpoints on the rapture. Um, I won't get too much into that, but my personal viewpoint, and you know what, take this to God, pray about it yourself. Um, don't take my word for anything that you, anything that I say, go and look it up um, and pray on it yourself. But my personal point of view is that there is going to be a taking up. It's going to be as things kind of start to really get destroyed, there'll be a taking up, but it's going to be way less people than the Christian church thinks. It's going to be way less people than the Christian church thinks. A lot of people have said their sinner's prayer. They went to church when they were 14, said a sinner's prayer, and they thought that was enough. But you have to know who Yeshua is. You have to know who Jesus is. You have to repent from your sins. You have to be seeking him every day and walking with him. You can't just say a prayer once, you know, 20 years ago and expect that you're good for your entire life and then just live a life of sin, right? What does he say? 
many will come to me in that day and say, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we work miracles in your way? Didn't we do all this stuff in your name? But I, he's going to say to them, I never knew you because you were a worker of lawlessness. You worked lawlessness. You didn't work, you didn't work the words of God. You didn't walk out your faith and belief in the words of God. And if the words of God are telling you to do certain things and to behave a certain way, and you're not walking that out, you don't truly believe, okay? So you can't just say a prayer and be done with it. You need to seek him every single day. You need to clean out your house. You need to make sure you're ready. You're going to meet your maker. You got to make sure you're ready, okay? That's all I got to say about that. Um... 92, during the tribulation, innumerable multitudes from every nation will wake up and turn to the true Jesus of the Bible and be saved. Revelation 7, 9, 9 to 17, Daniel 12 to 10. Zechariah 2 to 11. See also Acts 2, 17 to 21. Today, the seeds of the gospel are being spread in every nation. 93, many from Egypt to Assyria, Iraq, and the Middle East will call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. We see this happening every single day right now. Isaiah 19, 16 to 25, the Lord currently is moving mightily to save souls throughout the entire Middle East. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this is what I'm saying. Like salvation comes from seeing him and believing who he is. And if you truly believe he is who he is, it's going to show up in your life. It's going to change in your life, okay? It's not just a transaction of saying a prayer, but it's like, I believe you are who you are, and you're repenting and turning from your sins and turning back to the ways of God, okay? 94. Some would, be to, some would depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, 1 Timothy 4.1. This generation has witnessed explosion of heavenly visitors, false doctrines that are embraced by professing Christians everywhere, even though their messages contradict the word of God. Childing, witchcraft, yoga, psychics, etc. have also gained popularity, though forbidden by God. Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 12. You see this now all the time. Um, Christian churches having, you know, biblical tarot cards or biblical, <coughs> biblical um, you know, Halloween parties or whatever that they, they you know, they're, they're not biblical. They're trying to wash something that is unclean. God doesn't want you to baptize things that he wants you to burn, okay? There's certain things he wants you to burn and get them out of your life. He doesn't want you to try to baptize them and make them Christian. You can't baptize Halloween. You can't baptize pagan feasts. You can't baptize um, tarot cards. You can't baptize yoga. It is not of God and you have to burn it and get rid of it out of your life, okay? 95. People would reject the sound doctrine of the word of God and follow after the doctrines of men that appeal to their own lust. 2 Timothy 4, 3, 4, Acts 20, 29 to 30. Others would confess faith in Christ, but not obey his word. Matthew 24, 48 to 51. Matthew 7, 22 to 23. That's just what I was talking about. You can't profess Christ and then not obey his word. You don't, you do what you believe. You always do what you believe. So if you want to change something about yourself, change what you believe, okay? You always do what you believe in some form or another, even if it's deeply subconscious. So if you say you believe in Christ, but you are not changing, your walk isn't changing, you are not getting sin out of your life, and you're not, you know, and yes, I get it. You struggle sometimes. Sometimes you need healing, and sometimes you need different things. If you need healing, prayer, and stuff, inbox me, please, because I, I can help you. But the thing is, you're at least trying and you're, you're, you're trying to get there, right? Like you're, you're seeking him. You want to be closer to him. You want to understand. And you want to be free from your sin. That is how you know your heart is, is crying out to him, okay? If you don't care and you think you've said a prayer and you walked away and you don't care and you're not worried about it, then, you know, there's a chance that you're in trouble and you need to pay attention. Okay. Um, 96. 96. Many would forsake the Ten Commandments as a moral code, blaspheming, committing adultery, disobeying parents, stealing, lying, coveting, etc. Matthew 24, 12, Revelation 9, 10. What's really interesting about this is many people are forsaking the Ten Commandments and still calling themselves Christian. You got you st you to get to those Ten Commandments and make sure you're keeping them. 97. Idolatry would, idolatry would be pervasive. Nine, Revelation 9, 20. 13, 12 to 15, 19, 20, Micah 5, 10 to 15, Zechariah 13, 1 to 2. An idol is anything that competes for your attention and the attention due only to our creator. Statues, images, charge, charms, false gods, money, apparitions, as well as any possessions, pro prophecies, 
you know what? People who are, you know, if you're on the internet every day and you're looking for somebody to speak a prophecy over you, that is an idol. That is an idol. You're not supposed to be looking, you're supposed to have your relationship with God on point. You're not supposed to be looking to other things to get your inspiration, to get your um, strength from. You're supposed to do it through the word and through your relationship with God. Um, pleasure, a person, self, you know, a lot of people have idols that are their husband or their wife or their dream of a husband or a wife. That can be an idol. Your children can be an idol. If you're putting your children above God, if you're putting anything above God, that is an idol. So tear it down, rip it down, get rid of it ASAP. Um, any created thing can become idols. So anything that's created that is not the creator. So um, anything that could be another human, anything that's created and not the creator can become an idol. Uh, first Romans 18 to 25. Okay, last page, you guys. Uh, 98. Blasphemy, blasphemy would be common. 2 Timothy 3, 2, Revelation 16, 9, 11, and 22. Consider how often people use their creator's name in as a curse for word and that they have done what they have done is liken the one who is the source of every blessing to a four-letter curse word. 50 years ago, years ago, Hollywood seldom used God's name in vain in that way. Today, nearly every, every movie includes blasphemy. I found it interesting. Some people told me I never watched this movie, but the new Spider-Man movie apparently was so blasphemous to God that it was shocking. And a lot of people came on the internet and talked about it after. I never I never saw that movie, but um, apparently it included a lot of blasphemy towards God. And so why is it? Why is saying the name of Jesus a curse word? How does that make sense? Right? Doesn't make sense. 99. Sexual immorality would be rampant. Jude, Jude 18, Revelation 9, 21. Keep in mind, Jesus said, whoever looks to lust has already committed adultery in his heart. Matthew 5, 28. Therefore, God equates internet porn, lustful movies, TV shows, and magazines to fornication. The availability and consumption of sensual products has exploded in our generation. And we all know that. We all know that all of that is so prevalent right now. It's even on your normal TV shows. It's on your normal... Even kids' cartoons sometimes have really sexual imagery now. And so that has just exploded into the world. Number 100. Men would sear their conscience so that they could continue to sin. 1 Timothy 4.2. The conscience is where God reveals right and wrong. Con means with and science means knowledge. Therefore, we sin with knowledge when we ignore God's moral law and violate our own conscience. So this actually happens quite a bit where people convince themselves that good is evil and evil is good. And we see it all the time, right? Last one, 101. Men would mock the warning signs of the end of age saying, these signs have always been around. Second Peter 3, 3 to 4, the Bible even reveals their motivation. They love to lust. So people are going to say, well, this has been happening for years. No, you guys, we're getting these things fulfilled like every week. Like Biden's in Israel trying to split up Israel right now on a super moon when there's a conjunction coming up next week and there was just seven planets aligned. And then you have, you know, the Georgia Guidestones getting hit by lightning or blown up or whatever. This stuff is happening on the daily right now, okay? The birth pangs are happening every single day. And then, you know, the, look at the inflation rates. There's a, there's one that's actually not on here. It said, there's a Bible prophecy that said that bread will be half a day or a day's wage for a loaf of bread a day's wage for a loaf of bread. So that's also been prophesied. There's prophecies that I haven't even been able to cover today that are being fulfilled by the day right now. So therefore, there are many last day prophecies, several too detailed for this brief list. However, these 101 demonstrate that the Bible is the inspired word of God. It is true that some of these signs have been around for millennia, but our generation has witnessed the coming together of every single one of these events. Contrast the Bible's 100% track record against any self-proclaimed prophetic sources, and there is no comparison. 
The false prophets typically repackage and plagiarize the Bible's prophecies for the unsuspecting masses, but they make it so they they make so many vague prophecies that one is bound to be fulfilled. Nostradamus did both. Okay, so you'll see a lot of times the false prophets will take parts of things and they'll repackage them and they will. Um, they'll twist little things. What does a serpent do? It twists and it snakes, okay? So they'll repackage it and then they'll tell the masses about it and they'll try to convince them that that they know something. Okay, this is really important because we're seeing this in the media right now. All of these movies, all of these TV shows, all of this stuff, they're putting in predictive programming. Why are they doing that? They're doing it so that they can manipulate the masses to believe that they knew already what was going to happen and not that but the reason they knew is because it's all Bible prophecy. It's all been Bible prophecy for years. So they're trying to make it look like they're in control of what's happening, but that's not what's happening. They're not in control of what's happening. You see Beyonce on a red horse. You see the queen with two white horses. They're trying to make you think that they're in control of these things and that they are doing the Bible prophecies. They're not. They are Pharaoh's um, magicians, okay? So in in... Exodus, you, during the Exodus, you see that Pharaoh had magicians and he, the magicians would do magic and try to look like what God was doing in the plagues, like look like what God was making unfold on the earth. But they were just the magicians imitating what God was doing, okay? So just keep that in mind because there's so much of that right now. There's so much of that. All the famous people just do it now. And it's, it's just them trying to take credit for God's work. Jesus said that some men would be gripped with fear when these signs occur, Luke 21, 26, while others would look up with hopeful expectation, Luke 21, 28. Which camp do you fall into? If you're fearful, there's good news and bad news. The bad news is that God will judge every man who breaks even one of his laws. Have you ever blasphemed your creator's name or done anything like that, fibbed, stolen, anything like that? He's going to judge you. But the good news is, is that Jesus came to be our to be our redeemer, to cover our sin so that we can start again, we can be born again and have new life and have eternal life. So please look into it, share it with your family and friends. I'm going to post this on YouTube um, tomorrow. I'll post it on YouTube or the next day um, so that you can have it all. Um, if you want this list, I will post it in my links Sunday or something. Maybe I'll do it tonight. I probably won't do it tonight. Um, I'll do it. I'll do it Sunday, okay? So if you want this list, come back and and look for it in my links on Sunday, okay? I'll post a video once I post the list again. I'm sorry, I'm just not doing it tonight. I'm exhausted. That was a lot of talking. All right, love you all. Clean out your houses. Make sure you're ready. Shabbat shalom. Keep the Sabbath. Read your Bible. Good night, guys. Um, links will be in my bio, and I will put the list up on Sunday. So come back on Sunday afternoon, and I'll put the list in my links in bio, okay? I'm not going to do it till then. I need to break. But love you guys. Have a good night. Shabbat shalom.